and here we go this is flash at 20 percent off first of august 2019 we made it to august the eighth month Ooh. now i'm trying to make sure people know i got the show on tonight well they're on the rlm chat they'll figure it out or maybe not well either way the traditional hello to Grimner, the brains behind the, you know, technical stuff that we need to get done around here at, to get these things put on the internet. And Grim does that for us. When we can't do all of the stuff, he'll, he'll help us up. And uh, then we got the bots and bodies in the chatter room. One of the many little things to do in reallibertymedia.com is they got this crazy chat room going on. And for your chitter-chattering experience tonight, we've got Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Brackets, D.C., Anti-Asmo, Chalcedony, Free and Slave, Graham, C.I.P., Don C., Java Doctor, Two, Meister, Brown, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Rose, Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dark, Phantom, Cyborg, Noodle, and Civ, Me, Frumpy, from PFF, Gromit, Hagrid, <laughs> hey Mike, Jays, Nines, Jays, Kiss, Ponder Gander, Prince, Ponsa, Sock Puppet, Smataz, the bot, Van Meteor, and what? Yeah, I updated uh, Donna's name today for her. She can now be Donna Van Meteor. Just thought it was kind of amusing that nobody else cut that anyway those are the uh, participants that are either logged on and they're around somewhere or they're catching on the chat right now doing the meme wars and the link wars I know this you don't know that wars <laughs> I guess I got some two good stories I found I don't know how long it's gonna take to do the two I found but if you're uh, if you're catching the program tonight, the first little link I'm gonna post it too. But the first little link, all hmm, it makes me wonder uh, just how serious this law enforcement crap has gone. Cause anyway, here let me make a copy of this. <laughs> Then I'll uh, post it in the Ireland chat room for their uh, reading perusal. And then I'll read it. And it's called America's Gone Crazy. 79 year old woman jailed for feeding stray cats. Yeah, can you? I, hmm. And there's even a little video to go along with it inside the, the link. But uh, the reading part, ah, let's see what's going on here and free us of bondage, America. <laughs> uh, no, they're they're out saving the world from America, I think. And the story is written by Michael Snyder via the Economic Collapse blog, and it goes like this: In order for any society to function smoothly. The vast majority of the people need to behave at least somewhat rationally. Of course, there are always going to be exceptions, and we understand that. But most of us operate under the assumption that most of the people that we are going to encounter in our daily lives are not going to act like nut jobs. <laughs> Unfortunately, that may not be a safe assumption any longer as our society literally degenerates right in front of our eyes it seems like someone has opened up the barn doors and let out all the crazies and the truth is that our leaders are some of the best examples of this phenomenon just look at some of the winners that we have running for president Quite a few of them are far more qualified for the insane asylum than they are for for the highest office in the land. I didn't read this first. I just thought the title was good. So I hope it's good. I'm having fun. 
Of course, it doesn't end with our politicians. All across this country, it seems like people in positions of power can't think straight any longer. If you doubt this, just consider what just happened to a 79-year-old woman in Ohio named Nancy Segula, I think. When her neighbor moved away, he left a couple of cats behind and they became very hungry. So Segula would feed them and care for them because she didn't want them to suffer. Well, eventually one of her neighbors found out about this and the animal warden was called. It began in 2017 with me feeding stray kitties. I used to have a neighbor that had a couple of cats and he moved away so he left them, Segula said. I would always feed them and care for them because I was worried about them and I am a cat lover. Once my neighbors got upset about it, they called the animal warden. She got her first citation in 2017. So apparently what happened uh, goes on. Uh, over time, she received a total of four citations. See, this is probably this poor woman probably didn't have any idea what the hell was really going on. Never took it serious. Till it was too late. Unfortunately, the most recent citation required her to appear in court. And when she did, a judge sentenced her to 10 days in jail. Her latest citation required her to be appear before Magistrate Jeffrey Short last week. He sentenced her to 10 days in the Cayuga. <laughs> Cayuga County Jail. I couldn't believe what my mother was telling me. She gets 10 days in the county jail. I couldn't believe it, said Dave Pawlowski, her son. Son? <laughs> it says it twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's her son. Uh, I'm sure people hear about the things that happen downtown in that jail. And they are going to let my 79-year-old mother go there. Wow. Seriously, is this what our society has become? Putting a 79-year-old woman in prison for feeding stray cats is stone-cold crazy. But this judge in Ohio is actually doing it. Are we going to start putting all senior citizens that feed cats in prison in, in prison? It's county jail it's not really prison anyway if so then my parents are on in all sorts of trouble because they have been feeding stray cats for many many years having compassion for those in need should never be against the law in previous articles I have written about how many major cities in America are now passing laws against feeding the homeless well I'm sorry I, if I see someone in need and I want to give that person some food, no law is going to stop me from doing so. Let me switch gears for a moment and share another example of the craziness that is sweeping across America. <laughs> Within the last few days, police in Pennsylvania arrested a woman that was caught urinating on the potatoes in her local Walmart. The following comes directly from the West Mifflin Borough Police Department. <laughs> On July 25th, 2019, at 8.41 a.m., a West Mifflin police officer responded to Walmart in West Mifflin for a criminal mischief report. The officer was met by a Walmart loss prevention officer who reported the following incident. Loss Prevention Officer. Okay. The LPO was informed by an employee that on the day before he noticed urine on the floor near the potatoes in the produce area. The LPO then pulled video that depicted a female at approximately 20 to 10 hours on July 24th, 2019, urinating in the potato bins. The LPO then reported the incident to the West Mifflin Police. The detectives of the detectives P. 
of the West Mifflin Police Department investigated the incident and were able to identify the actor as Grace Brown. Actor? Okay. And made contact with her. Miss Brown, along with her attorney, came to the station where she identified herself as the person urinating on the potatoes. Maybe it's a luck thing. You know, salt over your shoulder, pee on the potatoes. Maybe it just didn't catch on. Oh, well, anyway, back to this epic story. Who in the world would do such a thing? Perhaps she really had to go. <laughs> and perhaps she didn't realize that Walmart has restrooms. <laughs> but it is probably much more likely that this woman was following an extremely disturbing new trend that has emerged on social media, according to CNN. It originally started with ice cream. It's just flat out gross. So let's write articles and spread the good news, people. And this is what I mean. This is what's going to... Uh, the people that listen to what I do don't do this kind of shit. We just kind of go, wow. <laughs> there you go. Progress. Okay. Back to the epic story. People go into grocery stores, open a container of ice cream at random, lick the top, put it back in the freezer, and then just walk away. Oh, and then they put a video of the entire grotesque display on social media for all to see. The Ice Cream Challenge, as it's now called, is just one of many social media trends over the past couple of years that has had people, mostly young people, doing questionable things and documenting them online. But since that time, this challenge has spread to all sorts of other consumer food products. The more disgusting someone can be as they defile food, the more views and likes they will get on their social media profiles. And that is apparently the goal. Of course, this is yet another sign that America is degenerating into idiocracy. Because you would have to be an idiot to think that defiling food in a grocery store is a good idea. And you would have to be an idiot to be entertained by watching someone else do so. Needless to say, I am not very optimistic about the future of this country. And I would love to hear someone make a convincing case that we will be able to turn things around any time soon. <laughs> Because right now, our nation literally appears to be going completely crazy. And it's getting worse with each passing day. Well, isn't that just the greatest story ever told or what? America's, well, I didn't know it was all that. I just, but a 79 year for, you know, feeding stray cats. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, there will be people that will justify the actions of the state against an old woman because there's laws you know 70 <laughs> jail i mean wow over what and wh what's the benefit to the state D does who is it that gets paid when bodies fill up in the jails you know i don't think the public knows much about all that as a collective got a lot of ideas you know we hear stories maybe been in jail or something but uh, where does all that money go <laughs> and yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have one more epic. And I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's not epic. Okay. I got another link for you, though. <laughs> Let me paste and copy this monster. Put it in the RLM feed bag for everybody to witness. And rate and judge and criticize, because that's what we do, people. <laughs> yeah, Moose, 11 years on the Freakers ball, because she is the other half of the Freakers. Okay, now, this little epic saga is entitled, Our Ruling Elites Have No Idea How Much We Want to See Them All in Prison Jumpsuits. <laughs> Okay. To me this is comic relief. I don't I don't take any of this crap very seriously because first off, well, 
Who owns all the prison stock? How do you how do you gonna put the person that owns the place in the place? Nah, the, these people are well above the uh, average Joe. You, you gotta catch them with their pants down and their dick in a ten year old boy, or you're not gonna do nothing. And the gap is getting narrower with all this. Uh, Good God, what drag queen shit lately. Anyway, back to my epic tale. <laughs> I just made me laugh, jumpsuits. Authored by Charles Hugh Smith, via of Two Minds Blog. And uh, it starts out way down here. Let me find it. Let's posit that America will confront a great crisis in the next decade. This is the presumption of the fourth turning. A four-generational cycle of 80 years that correlates rather neatly with the great crisis of the past. 1781, Revolutionary War, Constitutional Crisis. 1861, Civil War. 1941, World War II, Global War. What will be the next great crisis? Some anticipate another great power war. Others foresee another civil war. Still others reckon a military coup is likely. Hey, a coup d'etat. Ah, where was I? I lost my place being a smartass. Uh, uh, it's likely. Oh, here we go. And some view a collapse of the economy and the U.S. dollar as inevitable. Well, yeah, eventually it's got to crash. You can't, you can't run a game that, that, well, crashed a long time ago. They just keep propping it back up with more <laughs> magic for your spending dollars, people. Because you know, got to keep that machine running at all cost. Because the, uh, you know, the 300 families it supports, they really appreciate all your hard work. Back to my epic tale. While anything's possible, I propose a novel crisis unlike any in the past. A moral crisis in which the people challenge the power of the nation's corrupt, ruling elites. Not just elected officials, but the technocrats of the deep state. <laughs> this is almost amusing. The vested interests pillaging the nation, the new overlords of big tech. The financier new nobility, the corporate media, and the self-serving state corporate technocrat. No men who do the dirty work of the ruling elites. Wow, what a... Okay, not that it's not true. It's just, it's not this black and white. But, you know, people are easily confused. So, well, I'll just keep reading. Divide and conquer has been the absurdly easy strategy of the ruling elites to fragment and disempower the citizenry. It's child's play for the ruling elites to ceaselessly promote a baker's dozen of divisive issues via the corporate media and then watch the resulting conflicts split the citizenry into fragmented camps which subdivide further with every new toxic injection. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's just the way they write it. It's just, yeah. I don't think we're, well, I can't say we. I know I'm not that easily controlled by <laughs> outside forces. But, hmm. Then I don't see a lot of that, uh, I don't know, that follow the leader crap doesn't hang too well on RM, RLM anyway. Not, well, there's a few hanger-ons that, you know, they believe the state's going to win in the long run or some shit like that. When you're unwilling to admit that the game is what's fucked up, not the players. Oh, yesterday. No, you didn't rip my story. But, uh, one more thing. Here. Hold on. Eh, take time. So, uh, what were we talking about? Mm -mm -mm. Well, what weren't we talking about? I'm going to go back to my story. I shouldn't have interrupted it in the first place. The one issue that could unite the fragmented citizenry is moral revulsion 
As the Epstein case promises to reveal, there is literally no limit on the excesses and exploitations of the privileged few in America. No limit on what our ruling elites can do with absolute impunity. Well, they already did it, so it's a little late to complain, but, you know, look, let's see how far they go with this crap. Because on one hand, you got all this public's going all nuts about them locking up a pedophile. Then you open an, another site and you see these freaking parades where they got drag queens with little boys dressed like girls. This is pretty bad. I don't like it. I don't approve of it, appreciate it, like it, whatever the fuck you call being not liking that. That's where I sit. But now they got a new game to play. You know, if you complain about it, there's something wrong with you for complaining about something that is obviously fucking wrong. <laughs> if you got to paint it red, it's not nature. Just saying. Okay. Now, where did I leave off in my epic saga? Hmm. The nobility of the feudal era had some reciprocal obligation to its serfs. Our new nobility has no obligation to anyone but themselves. It is painfully obvious that there are two sets of laws in America. Bankers can rip off billions and never serve time. And members of the protected class who sexually exploit children get a wrist slap, if that. Here's the sad reality. Everybody in the ruling elites look the other way. All the self-described patriots and the intelligence services... All the technocrats in the departments of justice, state, etc. The Pentagon, and on and on. Everybody with any power knows the whole class of ruling elites is completely corrupt. By definition. To secure power in the U.S., you have to sell your soul to the devil, one way or the other. <laughs> like all ruling elites, America's elites are obviously confident in their power. This is hubris taken to new heights. That the citizenry could finally have enough of their corrupt, self-serving overlords does not seem in the realm of possibility to the protected few. There's always a way to, uh, what, to lawyer up and plea bargain for a wrist slap, a way to bend on another patriot barf, a way to offer a bribe cloaked as a plume position, plum position in a fill and throw capitalistic NGO, non-governmental organization, and so on. Hmm. The writing's a little uppity, but point's good. Now, the possibility that moral outrage could spark a revolt seems improbable in such a distracted culture. But consider the chart below. <laughs> a chart even. Even the most distracted, fragmented tribes of the peasantry eventually notices that they're not in the top 1% <laughs> or, uh, or the top 0.1%. And that the ruling elites have overseen an unprecedented concentration of wealth, power into the hands of a few at the expense of the many. And everybody votes for it. You're, see, well, whatever. Disagreeing with it, writing fancy words or whatever. It's all sweet and wonderful, but eh. We're stuck with this. This, this is the cake, man. Eat it. Either uh, change it or fix what's fucked up. But what's, there's not much to you can really complain about to anybody. Because... <laughs> No matter how bad you got it, man, I'm telling you, there's people out there in the real world of physical life that we don't engage with the computer. They're not having such a swell time of this. I mean, financially, maybe they're living better. You don't, I don't know. But, you know, just because somebody's, like, living rough compared to how I live doesn't make them an unhappy person. <laughs> just wanted to mention that. No, well, maybe where it's overpopulated and crowded and all, but here... The people that live rough here just don't seem to take it out on anybody because they're, they've they chosen their path that they want to be on. Anyway, to finish up this epic saga of life, the universe and stuff, 
Our ruling elites have no idea how many of us already want to see them all in prison jumpsuits. And they also have no idea how fast the moral revulsion with their corrupt leadership might spread. Scanning the distracted, consumerist rabble from the great heights of their wealth and power, they reckon and the capacity for moral outrage is limited, leaving them safe from any domestic cruise. Ah, my neighbors. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Domestic crusade. They also trust that the citizenry can be further fragmented, further distracted, and so they will continue to be invulnerable. Or worst case scenario, a few especially venal villains will need to be sacrificed, and then all will return to the bliss of neo-feudal exploitation. But that may have misread the American citizenry just as they've misread history. Well, they've misquoted history. I don't know about misread it. I read it. I've read so many different versions of shit that I'm convinced it's all bullshit. Don't matter what it is anymore. No, I don't even care. Because I asked yesterday on the RLM, or maybe it was earlier today, because this uh, Trump thing has already started. I mean, for crying out loud, I don't even live in America anymore. But I use an American site. I use a lot of American sites, but my main chat site is American. So they've already got this crap with the freaking uh, selection going on already. And it's like over a year uh, down the road. So we've got people arguing now about what's going to happen in 2020 so they can avoid looking at what they're doing now. Because <laughs> you don't want to know what they're doing now. It's not nice. America is a occupier and it takes shit over. And as you all know, if you live in America, you cannot look another human being in the eye and tell them that the government treats you nice, that you're pleased and happy, and all the things the government does for you make you just all wiggly and wet. You can't, I just don't see anybody doing that. What I see is people that seek revenge for political shit. And maybe some of it's got something to do with them locally. Maybe not. I don't see how it could be this big already. Well, I've been gone from America for a few years, but there's still got to be places that speak English, right? Uh, apparently not. America is just... Uh, I don't know. It's just a bunch of illegal aliens getting welfare and the rest of everybody else. What happened to them? Where are they? I think the, uh, the overcrowdedness, although financially you'd think it would create more necessity for more shit, da-da-da-da-da, uh, maybe they, they didn't do the, what do you call it, the homework on the numbers properly and they didn't do the math right so they made an error you know if you overpopulate and you undernourish the results are going to be terrible and purposely I mean since I was a child I mean I'm talking about my life not your life your life is whatever you think your life is but I grew up eating the same garbage and crap everybody else did Breathing the same air, drinking the same fucking water. I don't get what the um, the hold that the society thing has on people. Hmm. Um, my brother's got it, I think. Way differently than... Uh, hmm. I, don't know how to, I live so far out of everybody else's uh, comfort comfort levels maybe that's what it would be that mm, I don't know it makes living in Denmark comfortable because that lack of people bugging me all the time about where I do this and where you do that uh, a few times I think I did get asked like when I was here brand new just got to uh, Copenhagen people say oh what do you do and I tell them well, I'm retired from the CIA no, you're not. Yeah. 
who would ever think I was CIA? See how this works? I was one of the best. Couldn't believe what I could do. I go, no. Yeah. One more time they go, no, you're, you're fucking around, right? I go, yeah, I'm fucking around. I didn't do that. But the point is, we're, uh, we're all conditioned to believe the thing that we know, I think. Whatever the hell the thing that you know is, is how they get us. Because there's a lot of, uh, a lot of banter right now about politics on the RLM chatter feed during the daytime so far. And, you know, the, the Democrats are having their little debate thing going on. And, and they got your Republicans that are uh, interfering with the, uh, I don't know, the flow of the Democrat thing, interjecting, you know, what they think of it. Well, they're Republicans. We already know what you think of it. Why do you bother to, to type all the nasty shit? You know, it's like me wasting my time telling Hans to shut up. It's just pointless. So, you know, I just try to open up a video game and play some, something else and just avoid that until it's over and then come back. And uh works for me. Um, hmm. But we're just all this bantering about the best and the this and then that. Well, you're so split. And you got people on, <laughs> you got people that associate in this chat room. And they're friendly with each other, and they have different political opinions, and that's about as far as it should go. But I, I see this uh, competition about whose side is better, and when you look at the life that we've had, both sides have been in equal amounts of control over my lifetime. Both Republican and Democrat have had shots at this crap. And both sides have always ended up doing exactly what they were told to do by whoever tells them what to do and ignoring what we want them to do. They don't listen to the American public. any. So how can you imagine for a minute that they actually have a voting system? <laughs> they don't do what you want with the law. They make laws to fuck you. Me, you, everybody. And the, the people that support it by encouraging other people to participate in it. I don't know. They should listen to Hal Anthony talk. Hal, Hal understands how this works on a level that just goes beyond most of us. I understand it. I don't take it seriously enough to pursue it. But I'm one of those people that believes uh, whatever your belief system is, is true. Because it's your belief system. You can't have. You don't have to explain to anybody else why you believe in this particular god or why you believe that this particular brand of deodorant makes you not smell like a you know pile of shit. You've got you know yourself to decide. But <laughs> I don't think I don't think that uh, what other people think really freaking matters. But we taught that it does, but it doesn't. So now we've got, what, 12 and uh, August, September, October, November. It's got like 15 months of this ongoing drivel about presidential fucking candidates that no matter who they put in there end up doing the same shit that the idiot before them did. And if it's any freaking different, it's because you look at it through party eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's easy to be lied to when you believe the person telling you the story. So, so I would say anybody that's open to the concept of that we have folks who consider themselves, by the way, ruling elites, and they're above the laws, and the laws are, wow, who is the law for? The Supreme Court said the cops don't have any duty to protect the citizen. Didn't say anything about not citizens. Just the citizen has, uh, they're incidental. Wait a minute. <laughs> and still to this day, people hear it and they hear it, but they don't believe it. 500 people a year are being shot to death <laughs> by American police. Not to mention just uh, errors. People raiding the wrong Property, wrong address comes up on a, a 
warrant <laughs> the next thing you know you're you're sipping out of a straw and all your clothes have been you know destroyed by the police <laughs> because they were looking for drugs at the wrong house and the laws are written up so that you can't do shit about this if you fall victim to this state in any way shape or form you're fucked you can't fi unless you're rich there you go see if you're wealthy enough to get the lawyers to go in there and do the things but if you're not they got a jail cell for everybody for everything I even saw a link replete it's been a repeat for a while but uh, I think it was Oregon the the prison system is a for-profit business in that state and the state was suing the government because the government was not keeping the prison filled and they were losing money so hmm, there you go with all that kind of stuff well they're talking all kinds of stuff on the real liberty media dot com chatter today got Rome's and Don brain slaved and that's about it it's a small small chatter group today on the 20% off chat time we're usually at a I don't know I try to do the early evening I guess or not or evening but the afternoon ish kind of thing sometimes you make it sometimes you don't but they're talking about marijuana <laughs> Hemp, actually, but uh, see, hemp got hmm, hemp got brutalized because it's a a cousin of cannabis, and cannabis got just oh, man. What what the system did, how this system works. This this is why I don't trust or believe this is real. Give you this as a foundation. You've got cannabis, and in a particular part of life oh about 120 years ago everybody swore by it hemp boy people made everything out of it lasted forever but uh they got these people that wanted to make more money and have a, a disposable economy so that things would wear out in time and you'd have to replace them because if you used hemp chances are whatever you were making was going to last an incredibly long time so the powers of greed and you know the Jews basically and they I know I always say the Jews because that's the identifying word for me because I know the truth about all this shit as far as I'm concerned and uh, <laughs> oh man I don't know when you're attacking Iran you just remember central bank in Iran people that's the truth about Iran and uh, they held hostages in 1979 and uh, uh, yeah sure well those people were on their you know were there they weren't home well, that was American soil yeah these paper games we play with each other there's an American embassy in Copenhagen and uh, I don't think I don't think I've ever been by it when it was open. I think you got to make an appointment, and that was like four years ago. But uh, I wouldn't depend on the American government for anything at this point in life. I'd like to be severed, completely severed from all that stuff, and without having um, having to just re up with another group. So I don't know. I like this independent uh, stand of my very own. You know, I don't claim this place, and I don't claim the place I'm from. But I have, uh, I would never tell anybody that was going to go visit where I'm from, don't go visit there. Are you crazy? Now, if they're moving there, I would maybe throw a little weird look at them. But uh, I have yet to meet anybody moving to America since I left America uh, I've met a, a handful of people that were visiting going on a vacation but destined to return and this year I have yet to run into any Americans downtown I'm feeling very Danish <laughs> because uh, you know I hear all the Danish on the street so when I hear an English or American voice it's just 
what? <laughs> so it's like the Danes when I go in there and order a beer and they don't know who I am. And they hear me and, you know, order my beer in English. And I still order it, you know, in Dane. I use the Danish word, but I say it like an American. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not acquiring their Danish language. Uh, it would be too much of a stretch to try to, to reproduce that language, so I don't. And it's still to this day, it still amuses me. Um, but <laughs> what doesn't amuse me? Twenty percent off my uh, my goal for the night. I thought that story was going to read a lot longer than it did. Ah, Grimner, <laughs> he just noticed I was on. <laughs> yeah, I went on about uh, 8 o'clock my time, which is 2 o'clock on the east coast of the United States. Yeah, I did the thing next, and it gave me back um, nothing. So, let me see what it does now. Now I did next. Oh, now live. Oh, whoops. Did I do it wrong? Yeah, I guess I did it wrong. Oh, well. Oh, good. Some things just work out in my favor no matter how I look at it. But anyway, yeah, I was ranting about how easily it was for the uh, press and the government and the education system to demonize and criminalize plants and make people believe the absolute freaking worst possible things about nothing and if you smoke pot you know oh no problem grim eh? no grimner forgot all about me i didn't forget about me and besides it's summertime man if you get an opportunity to be outside take it because winter's going to be here soon enough we're all going to be housebound and then i'll i'll have you as my hostages once again ah <laughs> Well, anyhow, so I guess what I'm saying is um, the, all these powers that are in control of everything, from the very beginning of, of my life, one of the worst things you could do was pot. Oh, the devil's lettuce. Oh, you're going you're gonna to turn into a criminal and, you know, you're going to live in a trash can and eat out of garbage cans and shit like that if you grow up smoking that devil's lettuce you know and then oh it's got absolutely no medical uh, benefits whatsoever the cdc fda for years and years and years these freaking lion whatever they are uh, they uh yeah i'm now oh okay so i did uh i should have done the thing now nah i got it anyway I'm just reminiscing about how, when I was a kid, how smoking pot was such a big fucking deal with people, because you could seriously get in some fucking police situations because you smoked some pot. And I'm not talking about, hey, they went and robbed a bank. No, I'm talking about what they, what'd you do? Well, we were sitting in the park smoking a joint, and the cops decided to check out what we were doing, and we got busted. Oh, big criminals, huh? And when you when you think about it, what if you're a pot smoker, not one of these people that's anti-pot or wants wants to vote for it so it could be legal to make tax money off it, but somebody that actually does smoke a little bit of weed once, even freaking once in a while, to know the truth about what the shit does. All this Willie Nelson shit just pisses me oh, off, makes my tumor bleed. I'll never smoke with Willie again. Uh, what what the fuck happened? nothing what they ever bother with him for tax evasion why because he smokes weed that's probably why they put him in jail because tax evasion what the fuck is tax evasion in the first goddamn place if hmm, you ever see this thing if you've seen this thing the way it's written and interpret it the way i do they tell you okay you have to figure out how much you owe of them okay well how much do I owe you? And they say, well, you figure that part out. And then when you're done, we'll tell you if you're right or not. Well, if they already know what you owe them, why are they bothering to have you go through all the work of figuring out what you owe them? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bunch of shit. 
That see, that's how scams and fucking hustles and make believe sleight of hand and bullshit actually works is the way we live. Our very d day involves more lives than you can probably count. Starting with the minute you blink, you know, you open your eyes and you breathe some of that shit in your freaking lungs. There you go. Off to the races. Let's see what kind of poison am I ingesting today? And it's universal and it's being done to us all. And they brag about it on the internet. Bill Gates. We'll get population down by God if it kills everybody. And they cheer this prick on. You know, where's the, where's the opposition? I hear all this crap about guns. Gun laws. Gun rights. I'm going to protect myself from the government when they come and try to take my gun. Have you ever seen anybody actually protect their self from the government when the government wants something from them? <laughs> Tell me who these people are that win when they protect themselves from the government. Which, in the first place, when it was called a republic, uh, the people that lived in the republic, well, they had a fair chance at you know winning their side of the fight if they were truly on the right side of the fight. And now it's just the government just punishes everybody equally. for If they can get their mitts on you, you're fucked. Hmm. And then, well, Grim, I maybe I brought up a kind of a sore subject with it, but he says, I owe you nothing. Fuck off, IRS. Well, yeah, do a little reading. If you're out there voting and all this chanting Trump and Democrats are this and Republicans are that bullshit, why don't you do a little reading about the way these things fucking operate and get off your, uh, get off your mountain, man. It's time to feed the ducks, people, because they're wild animals. And you know what? Wild animals would be fucked without us taking care of them. Right? I mean, what is... It seems like anybody that tries to do anything for the benefit of anybody else ends up erased or, you know, suicided three shots to the back of the head and they call it a suicide. But... When you own the prison stock, guess what you don't have to do? Prison time. So, it's like this, uh, <laughs> there's still, I, I've been, uh, Cirque was on me today about some kind of cue, something or another, right? And she said they did a, it's either a parody or there's a planned arrest. <laughs> Bill Clinton. <laughs> I'll tell you, if Bill Clinton is in the shape he seems to be in, in the photographs that I see of him, he's been punished enough. Leave the poor old bastard alone. I mean, my, yeah, he's cooked. If, if you can call whatever he's got left of life, if he can enjoy that, like that Bush guy in the wheelchair, he smiled all the way out, and he had a big old mouth and all that shit. And, but these, these people aren't quite like us. Different, there are different. Um, hmm. When you don't have a conscience, it makes you capable of doing the most horrible shit to other people for money, I suppose, is really the motivator. They offer you a paycheck and you run around arresting old people for, you know, traffic violations. <laughs> Cotton candy that at the time, well, I swore that was crack, sir. It looked like crack to me. It was blue. <laughs> I saw it in the training film, Your Honor. So, I don't know. We've just got this uh, collective pile of fuck-ups to look on. And somehow, still, people come out of it voting for one side of the coin over the other side... And, and just completely ignoring that the coin is flawed. There is no fucking... Uh, there's no way to repair the damage that's been done. This thing is doomed for collapse. Of course, it wouldn't be a... <laughs> it's not going to be whatever we think we're, we're seeing is probably slight, slight of hand still. So, because we're dependent on the internet. And I'm not in these places. I'm in a nice little pocket. 
So to collapse my little pocket would, wow, it would have to start somewhere else. It wouldn't start here. So it would have to start maybe in Copenhagen. I don't know. Maybe Munich. Maybe Brussels. Who knows? What is motiv what's going to motivate people to work if there's no paycheck at the end of the work week to work for? Hmm. What would we do? To you know, to survive in a situation like that, I wonder uh, how many organized like city areas are prepared for. What if they they didn't have any uh, fi any finance electronic finance for a week, or what if the internet just stopped down, boom, for four days, no internet, couldn't get it up, can't make it work, nothing. What would they do? How would they trade? <sighs> but, see, we, we've got instant everything, and everybody seems to be uh, so connected and so instant and right now that they're not looking for, well, if something goes wrong, what the fuck are we going to do? Because, <laughs> well, like I say on another po program, we're in a perfect world, baby. And in a perfect world, well, nothing ever goes wrong. People say that same thing to me, but about um, like, what if you got ill? Mm, yeah, well, uh, I've been ill before. Uh, the things that made me ill, I've eliminated those things out of my life, replaced them with other things, and haven't felt ill since 2011. So, hmm, when I feel that way, I guess I'll deal with it at that time, but for for the moment, um, like I've been saying since, what, 2011, feeling all right now, and as long as that continues, then that's the goal. Now, if things change, I would attribute it to something I'm doing that is bringing it on. I, I'm not a blamer. I'm not going to... I'm not going to blame Miss Mary. Hey, Mary made me sick. I listened to her podcast, and the next day I got cancer of the brain. Oh, and speaking of Mary, uh, hell of a show she did last night. If you didn't catch Mary's podcast, the Rocket Chair podcast, from uh, Wednesday, the 31st of July, I would recommend that you go over to BitChute or whatever source of rerun you use. Go use it. Miss Mary did a really good show last night. Well, the first half was usually bantering, and so, but the last half, she got into a little history kind of thing. I really enjoyed it. Thought I'd mention it to you. Because we got other people that do the radio crack me the fuck up. Grimner, depending on, on the link, Grim can get a little mad at people about some of the stupid thing that's that uh, collectively that we agree with. You know, uh, I've put in implied consent is a huge problem that we share. And that implied consent is when the government just implies that you consent and does shit behind your back. Basically, they don't need your consent. They'll just assume it. Well, hmm. I don't think there's anything left that even resembles constitutional going on in the home of my parent not parents my my one parent and the other home of my other parent I I don't want to even visit I had my fill of the UK no thank you this is appealing as America is right now and I mean more or less I'm talking big cities I'm not talking your smaller US I'm talking your bigger US but there's still not anything that's happened since I met Cirque about America that's inducing her to want to visit my homeland. So, hmm. and if Trump gets reelected, and he probably will, I would assume they're going to either invade Iran after the election or, be, well, either before or after it. One way to keep him in office, one way or the other. That's uh, that selection thing. Wow. I, I don't know. Go to Lad, Ladbrokes is a betting site. It's um, L-A-D-D-B-R-O-K-E-S dot com. And you can get um, odds on the president 
in certain areas of his life, his public life. And they're taken, they take bets. You can bet on his reelection. You can bet on whether he uh, goes to work the day after he gets reelected. You can bet on anything. It's on Ladbrokes. I recommend it to everybody. Whoops. <clears throat> anyway. So we're we're kicking through 20% off. I went on a rant about weed because, uh, well, it's that thing I have about the first story that we're told is somehow that's what sticks. That's what people have seemed to intimate through you know my lifetime is, well, I learned this, that, the other. This is the way I learned it. So that's the way it's got to be. And... You know, it goes to things like, well, the moon landing on TV in 1969. That really still, mm, people, I seen a thing today about, what's that Elon guy? Elon Musk is going to go to the moon in 20 and 21. You know, instead of anybody admitting the truth, you know, nobody will ever admit the truth. They just keep the, the lie going on. <laughs> So whether this guy's going to the moon or not going to the moon, it sounds like it's the foremost point of that, but it's really, it's just a bigger way to hide more shit. You know, if you, you're, it's magic and distraction, three-card money. Ah, Polish vodka with brain damaged brothers in Denmark. Ooh, yeah, I'd go smoke a few bowls. I'm just going to smoke another bowl while I'm doing this. I might just do a... Um, I think I'll just do a one hour tonight. Don't really have a lot of chatter. I, I mean, I have it just... To, eh. I'll do a dork table with Vinny on Saturday and see you guys later. So, coming up on the... Uh, this is Thursday. Thanks for hanging with me on the 20% uh, off podcast. And for Friday, we've got Vinny was saying he's doing a ponder gander. I heard from Mary last night, listen to Mary, that he's doing a ponder gander tomorrow at 1 o'clock or noon. It's either noon his time or 1 o'clock on the East Coast. I'm not sure because Vinny confuses the shit out of me. And then at 7 o'clock on Wednesday and Friday, you got Graham Z with her Rocket Chair podcast. And then at 11 o'clock, Moose Girl and Grimner come on and do the Freaker's Ball. And if Moose is away, Grimner will do Balls to the Wall. Saturday at noon, I come back with the Dork Table. I've been hijacking Vinny. Maybe I'll catch Mary this week, too. And then Sunday, we've got Grim Cummins on in the, with the Blues. And then at, uh, we play Trivia until Hal Anthony at noon on the East Coast. Or Eden. You know, the West Coast in Oregon, noon o'clock, behind the woodshed. Yeah, figured it out. And then Monday, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, got Grim Leftovers. The leftover stuff from the Freakers Ball, done with a little attitude on Mondays. And then Tuesday, I've got my 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast in a perfect world without Vinny. And Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Graham Z on the East Coast, 7 at night, the Rocket Chair Podcast. And then I'll be back next Thursday with uh, another shot at 20% off. I hope I have more stuff to be more entertaining next time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, over and out. <laughs>